Wolves fans, please direct your attention to the penalty box and welcome Wolves Senior Executive Vice President Wayne Messmer. Fans, tonight we honor first responders. I'm pleased to introduce you to two of my personal heroes. On April 9th, 1994, when I was the victim of a senseless act of violence, it was these two Chicago Fire Department paramedics who came to my rescue. Please give a warm reception to my personal hometown heroes, Henry Hugo and Bill Steiner, the guys who saved my life. His voice and the anthem he sings have a range that extends far beyond the Allstate Arena, far beyond Chicago, and its sprawling suburbs. It is a part of the history of sports in this city, a part of the history of the song itself. He also has a head for business, and he would lend both of those talents to the International Hockey League's new Chicago Wolves franchise. But just months before his debut with the Wolves, Wayne Messmer was attacked and shot in a shocking act of violence near one of Chicago's most venerated sports landmarks. Wayne Messmer is in serious but stable condition at Cook County Hospital after being shot in the throat early this morning. But tonight, Messmer is in serious condition at Cook County Hospital, recovering from gunshot wounds he received early this morning. We didn't know if he was going to live or die. We, we were there that night. Yeah, we were at the hot, we were at the hospital. And he was, it was bad. It was bad, bad. Shot in the throat. Was that just like a random thing, or what happened? I think so. Yeah, yeah. He, he went to a, a bar after the. He was at the, at the United Center. Right. Well, at that time it was the old stadium. He went and about maybe one or two in the morning, he went back to his car, and the guy just came me back and tried to rob him or something. He shot him right through the window and shot oh, him right in the And from my recall, he went to the. Uh, he got he, he, Cook County. No, but he, he went to the restaurant. He walked or oh, drove no, yeah, right, to right, the right, restaurant right. where they had with a bullet in him, and they brought him to Cook County Hospital. And they didn't know if he would ever speak again. Really? Oh, yeah, for sure. When it comes to the shooting, I was there at the event, but then I was gone for two and a half days. Uh, and uh, in a, some kind of funk. And uh, finally, when I did awakened, there was a lot of questions that I had, and some things were being filled into me uh, about the details of who was there and who stepped forward, and uh, uh, Kathleen told me that, that uh, it was the first time she ever met Don, and uh, he came up to her and, and just said, we're good. While Wayne recovered, Don Levin and the Wolves staff continued to put together the pieces of the new franchise as they anticipated their IHL debut. The Wolves signed a number of veteran guys, hardworking grinders like Al Secord, Wendell Young, and Gordy Roberts, who comprised the team that was not unlike the city itself. This is still, at the very heart, it's still a blue collar town. And I think the idea was that we have to mimic the city. We gotta be a tough team. We gotta be a hardworking team. We, we saw the Cubs and we saw the, uh, you know, how, how well they did. And then the Bears, how tough they were. So it was easy for me to come up with an idea because I said we're going to be like the Cubs off the ice and like the Bears on the ice. The Wolves would drop the puck for their first ever contest as a franchise against Detroit on the road, posting a loss in the shootout. The excitement of the first game wasn't enough to give them a win. They'd face Detroit again for their home opener, and this time they'd get the best of the Vipers. I think it was October 14th, 1994 for the home opener. It was completely sold out at what was then called the Rosemont Horizon, and, and the rafters were literally shaking, and I wasn't far from them. But opening night, I didn't know what to expect. You know, a new franchise, and you know, we, we opened up actually on the road and coming home, and then seeing the type of crowd that was, that was there, it was, it was refreshing to, to see you know, uh, the crowd and the, and the enthusiasm of the crowd and the enthusiasm of the hockey people. And mm -hmm. you know, coming from Tampa, uh, seeing true hockey people. You know, Chicago is such a hockey city, sure. and seeing the, and seeing that, and I think we benefited a little bit from a, from the lockout uh, mm -hmm. coming in. But I think uh, because of the lockout, fans came to our games, and I think they stayed. And that was a big thing. And opening night, uh, any opening night, whether it's the uh, first game, the, your inaugural game, you know, of your first season, or you know, any season, I think the opening night sets the stage for the season. And uh, I think our opening night at home set the stage for the franchise. The wind, the crowd, the atmosphere. 
All of it was eclipsed by a very special moment before any puck hit the ice. The part of the show that everyone in Chicago has been waiting for for a long time. I've never seen this much anticipation for the national anthem. Ladies and people and gentlemen. are cheering now because they know that it's coming up. So we'll turn it down Six to the public address ago, announcer, Ed Wasinick, for the, the rest of the story. The was silenced. Tonight, he is back. Would you please rise to honor America, accompanied by organist Nancy Faust and escorted by his wife Kathleen. Please welcome Wayne Mesmer and the singing of our national anthem. That was an Elvis moment, is what it was. It, it was uh, surreal because there was, <clears throat> there was so much doubt and then it appeared that maybe I would be ready six months and five days after the shooting on uh, October 14th of 94, but who remembers such a date? Uh, it, it was a, enormously significant. You know, there was a lot of messages happening. Can't let the bad guys win. Thank you to everybody who had rallied around me. Uh, a humbling experience that so many people would care about just, you know, some guy who sings the anthem. It, it, uh, it changed my life. Wayne sets a standard and, you know, it's, it's like our opening of our, of our games. Like I was telling everyone to be there, be there for the national anthem, be there for the opening of our games. It's, it's like it's, missing the beginning of a movie. Yeah, it, exactly. That's true. Exactly. You, you, you're missing, you know, depending on how the game goes, it might be yeah. the best part of the night. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it truly is. And, you know, a lot of times... Tune in next time as Daring Greatly continues to chart the history of the Chicago Wolves in this exclusive docuseries.